Our Asia CEO, Tony Fernandez, is here. And Tony, it's great to see you. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, thank you for inviting me. I certainly want to get into what you've been able to do at Air Asia because you acquired an airline, completely turned it around, and I want to get your sense of Asia. Uh, but, but let's talk on the headwinds of the airline industry right now. What do you think is going on? Well, I mean, I think if you take out, you know, the PR incidences, that's actually a good time for us. Oil is relatively stable, demand is strong, and... Uh, you know, even though globalization is kind of hitting a rocky patch, people still need to travel. So we're actually in a good position. But it shows all of us that uh, we've got to be good at what we're doing. Social media is there, and you make one slip up, and uh, you, know, you see what happens. So, so this is just, you know, one or two incidents that human error, and you just think that this has nothing to do with the overall industry, whereas the industry is going well. I think it's going well. I mean, you look, profits are up. Demand is good. Uh, as I said, one of our major costs, oil, is fairly stable. So it's a, good, it's a good time for the industry. So tell me about Air Asia. I know Air Asia has been cleared to, for flights to the United States, right? Explain your business because you've got one leg, which is just domestic throughout Asia, yeah. and now you've just been cleared for the United States. You start these first flights this summer. Yeah, we have, we have two uh, public companies, Air Asia, which is like a southwest of, uh, of Asia, and then we have something called Air Asia X, which is a long-haul airline. And we're very excited that we've just started, got permission to fly to Hawaii, so we'll do Kuala Lumpur, Osaka, Osaka, Hawaii at a pretty low prices. It's exciting people in Southeast Asia. And I hope that uh, this will be the start of our foray into America, Los Angeles, uh, San Francisco, and potentially via Europe into uh, America, which will be great. That is great. And, and Tony, you've, you, you were not an airline guy. I mean, you were in the music business, right? Yep. And you uh, acquired an airline and you completely turned it around. Yeah, maybe that helped. <laughs> but I didn't come, but, you know, I, was, I used to come to L.A. to see my friends David Foster and all the Warner Brothers guys, and uh, here I am talking about airlines. So it is a big change, but... Uh, How did you do that? You saw an opportunity and you thought, well, this could be a moneymaker? Yeah, I was life? sitting in a bar after I just quit from Time Warner, right. AOL Time Warner. Okay. I didn't believe in the vision. I left 75 Rock, quit, and... Uh, 75 Rock, of course, was their headquarters in New York. Correct, and then... Uh, Flew to London, which was kind of my second home, sitting in a bar, contemplating what I was going to do with the rest of my life. And I saw Stelios of EasyJet on TV. So I took a bus up to Luton Airport, serving in Orange. People flying to Barcelona for eight pounds and six pounds. And at that moment, I said, I'm going to do this in Asia. Now, there's a very fine line between brilliance and stupidity, but I went, I went for it. incredible. <laughs> you didn't know anything about the airline business. No, but nothing. You were an entrepreneur, and you knew how to build a business. Correct. I mean, business is business. Everyone says, you know, how do you do it, etc. But, you know, it's about maximizing your top line, minimizing your costs, and uh, having a good balance sheet. And we, we were good with people. You know, we have 20,000 staff now. We don't have a single union. We're the lowest cost airline in the world. I think the culture of the airline is what has driven us for this growth. I bought the airline with two planes, 25 cents, three days before 9-11. And uh, first year we carried 200,000 passengers. This year we'll carry 63 million passengers. Wow. And we have 200 over odd planes. Tony, that's fantastic. Congratulations. Thank you. This is just a wonderful, wonderful entrepreneurial story. You also now have plans to expand in Europe. Yeah. I mean, wait, no, we, we really want to be kind of global, global. My dream is that you can go around the world with AirAsia. And, uh, you know, we, we've now got the right kit. And we're, we're talking to Airbus, and Boeing has also talked to us. I think it's important for our kind of business to have the right type of aircraft. And uh, we're looking to re-enter Europe, which will hopefully be by the end of the year. So you said you, you think this is really the low-cost carrier in the world. We are. Yeah. We are. That's been uh, recognized. So you're going for that specific target audience. Correct. I mean, I came up with a tagline, now everyone can fly. We're all about reducing fares, allowing people in Asia to fly. We've made Asia smaller. 60% of our routes are routes that we've never done before. You know, we have 21 routes into China, most of them secondary and tertiary cities. You know, their tertiary city is almost as big as my country, so it's an exciting time, and now we're going exactly. to India as well. Right, you're talking about really significant numbers. Correct. Now everybody can fly. I like it. Tony, great to see you. Thank you very much. Thank Thanks you for so having me. Thank you so much me. for joining us. We'll be watching Air Asia. Tony Fernandez there.